Hello friends, I am Yash. Welcome to The Rising Edge. This is the third part of Static Timing Analysis. In the previous part, we looked at why setup and hold times exist by understanding the internal structures and working of the D-latch and the D-flip flop. If you have not yet watched that video, click here to watch it and then come back to this one. So now, we are going to discuss how the hold time can be negative. Let's get started. This is the internal structure of a flip flop. Setup time is no doubt always positive since it is simply the delay from the D input to the node X. However, for hold time, we have to consider two different delays. First is the time that the transmission gate takes to turn off after the clock's active edge arrives. Let us denote this by TG. Second is the combinational logic delay in the data path between the input and this transmission gate. Let us denote this by T in. Actually, our sole purpose is to prevent the data change that happens at the input from reaching the node Y while it needs to be stable for proper latching. In other words, for how long the data at the input needs to be stable after the active edge of the clock. This is to avoid corrupting the already present data at node Y that needs to be latched at that edge. So, the relative values of these two delays will decide whether the whole time is positive, zero or negative. There are three possibilities. First case, when the transmission gate switching delay is greater than the data path delay, that is Tg greater than T in. Let the transmission gate delay be 5 nanoseconds and the data path delay be 2 nanoseconds. Upon the clock's active edge arrival, the transmission gate would have made the data wait for 5 nanoseconds if there was no data path delay. However, due to the presence of data path delay, 2 nanoseconds will be gone in transit from D to the transmission gate input. Hence, the waiting time at D is reduced to only 3 nanoseconds. Now, if we are able to maintain a stable value at D for only 3 nanoseconds after the clock edge, any change afterwards will take 2 nanoseconds to reach the transmission gate and by that time, it would have turned off completely and our purpose is solved. Hence, our whole time comes out to be Tg minus T in, which is equals to 3 nanoseconds here. And it is positive in this case. Now, moving on to the second case. Here, the data path delay is equal to the transmission gate switching delay. Let us take both these delays to be 5 nanoseconds. Any change in the data input after the clock's active edge arrival will take 5 nanoseconds to reach the transmission gate. But the transmission gate would have been turned off by that time because it also took 5 nanoseconds to turn off completely. Hence, there is no need to wait at the D input. The whole time in this case comes out to be 0. Now, the third and the last case. Here, the data path delay is more than the transmission gate switching delay. Let T in equal 7 nanoseconds while the Tg is still 5 nanoseconds. Now please observe carefully that if the data gets changed even 1 or 2 nanoseconds before the clock edge, the T in delay is still sufficient to make sure that the transmission gate is turned off by the time it reaches the transmission gate. Hence, the whole time in this case comes out to be 5 minus 7 that is minus 2 nanoseconds. You may question what about setup time now? Won't it get violated? since we are changing the data before the clock edge? No, this will not affect the setup requirement because this data path delay will not allow this change to enter inside the latching circuitry to cause any disturbance or violation to the current value that is to be latched at the upcoming edge. Summarizing all the three cases that we saw for the whole time, if transmission gate switching delay is more than the data path delay, the whole time is positive. If both of these are equal, the whole time is zero and if the data path delay is more than the transmission gate switching delay, the whole time becomes negative. So this was all about the negative whole time. Hope you understood it. In case you have any doubt, please put them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. In the next lecture, we'll start with the how. How to do static timing analysis in a sequential circuit design beginning with the setup analysis. So make sure to watch that. Also, if you like this video, please share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next Rising Edge.